I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. And we're going for a drive. Twenty twenty Mini John Cooper Works. Countrymen all four with launch control. That's not bad. It's better than I thought it'd be for a Mini, but it's also kind of a BMW, so I didn't doubt it. So this will actually do zero to 100 kilometers per hour in 4.9 seconds. Horsepower and torque. 301 horsepower, 331 pound-feet of torque from a two liter turbo four cylinder. And what's that up from last year? 73 horsepower and 73 pound-feet of torque. Cause we did drive a JCW Countryman. Yeah, we drove a 2018. So this is like a substantial upgrade and this is kind of almost a hot hatch now. Hot hatch, but it's like as big as an SUV. SUV is. Yeah, so because it's a Mini, they really trick you into thinking that it's still a Mini, even though it's like a Maxi or something. Like, it's it's big. When you see it from a distance, in the traditional Mini color spec, you're like, oh, it's just a Mini. You get closer, you're like, that's pretty big. And when it's parked next to an SUV, you're like, this is a minivan size thing. Exactly. They totally trick you by doing a lot of stuff with the design. So you consider this a hot hatch, even though it's an SUV size? I kind of do. So is the GLC 63 a hot hatch? No, that's a little big. But isn't it the same size as this? If not it's, lower and smaller. It's kind of close. I honestly, I it's don't know. It's such man. a weird thing, but they did a great job. They did. So let's get into the looks first. Yes. So let's start with the front end. It looks very mini, but it's got the JCW logo in the grill. Yeah. And I think last time I called it a puffer fish and I kind of still feel that way. Yeah. The, the eyes, the eyes, the, the headlights look <laughs> exactly like puffer fish eyes. Yeah. So they kind of like squared them up, whereas the regular mini gets rounded ones. And then we've also got the hood bulge and everything else just looks very mini, especially in this color. Yeah. And then if we move to the side profile, we've got like black stuff kind of everywhere where it's matte and glossy. Yes. Yeah, so we have matte all along the bottom and then gloss along the top and it's divided with chrome and this is one of the few cars where i think chrome looks absolutely perfect on it and i actually totally agree and then you also mentioned that the black is what kind of hides the shape of this oh for sure it, it makes it look like a mini yeah if you look at certain parts it looks huge but if you look at just the window frames then it's smaller and i feel like if everything was paint matched to the body color this would look massive oh yeah it would look like the fiat 500 yeah, yeah. uh the uh, super big one xl or whatever yeah. it's called yeah l and if we look at the wheels We've got gigantic brakes back there. Yeah, they're absolutely massive. What do you think of the wheels that are on it? I think they're all right, nothing too crazy, but there are better wheels available. And what are the Continental recommended tires for the Mini Countryman JCW <laughs> all four? The Mini JCW Countryman all four? Hit me with it. Conti Sport Contact 5, and the winter would be the Conti Winter Contact TS830P. And just a reminder, if you're driving somewhere where there's snow, put winter tires on your car. But I've been seeing a lot of older Minis on the road recently for some reason, and I really like that original five-spoke pattern. Yeah, those are so classic. And by older Minis, I mean newer older Minis. Yeah, the new redesigned ones, I get it. And back to the chrome thing, we've got chrome door handles, and we've got a button to unlock or lock the door. But if you don't want to use that, we've also got a pretty cool mini key, which is like a big stupid circle. <laughs> yeah, big stupid circle. <laughs> it kind of is, though. Yeah, like, I, yeah. You get the key, you're like, oh, I gotta I know. put this in my pocket for the rest <laughs> of my ownership. Yeah. And then what about the back end? I think it looks all right. Again, kind of mini, but my biggest disappointment is we don't get the Union Jack tail lights. I know! You get them on the regular mini and I think the Clubman, but not this one. Disappointment, but it does say mini right inside, which is pretty cool, it's hard to see. And then we have nice real exhausts. Yes, and they are dirty. You know what would have solved that? If they made exhaust tips that went down like the Lincoln Aviator. Unfortunately, that would solve that problem. Do not take this seriously. Yeah, don't, don't do it. Don't mini, this was a joke. <laughs> don't do it. This is fine. You can clean your tips. And then we got a power hatch, which you can also click the lock button on the back, which I think is very convenient as well. It's pretty fancy for a mini. But you know what sucks? You can't fold down the rear seats from behind. You need to go to the front, click the button, unlock it, unlock the back door, or click the button on your big circle key fob. And then you have these little pull strings, which took us forever to find the middle pull string. Yo, how about a box test? Let's find out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Shout out box test people on Patreon. So now to driving it, I have a couple of gripes with it. What's that? When you come to a slower speed or a stop, when you give it gas, like it takes a while for anything to happen. Yeah, there is like turbo lag, but not really turbo lag. It's just like overall lag. It's overall lag. Yes. And when you're up to speed, like, okay, I'm going right now. I'm in normal. If I floor it, it goes. 
it's very quick, but it's those little things. Like if I need to do a left turn and I floor it, it takes a while. I'm like, I don't want to like worry about getting T-boned when I've got a 300 horsepower car. Yeah, I totally agree. They should have given it more response down low from a stop. Kind of like Hyundai and stuff does. Yeah, they also screw that up. I just want a little bit more bite off the initial pedal press. By the way, these pedals are cool. Look at the, them. The pedals are cool. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to put it into sport with my little switch and go through cliche. Then I'll get you in the driver's seat to talk about more of the fun stuff in here. Yo, downshift with those paddles. I got my head up display with my tack. And just like the other Mini, it's got that kind of thing. Yeah, because this is the eight speed auto. But it's a, like a little plowy for all wheel drive, I guess, which is fine. So plowy means understeery. Yo, I'm trying to use different words, man. <laughs> I checked the thesaurus yesterday and oh, that's, that's what good. I came up with all right. on my script. Plowy, like a snow plow. <laughs> but it, it's pretty quick faster than it probably should be for a SUV hiding as a car. The horsepower or the handling? Just driving through turning roads fast, it's quicker than you think it'd be. Yeah, it is a Mini and Minis do traditionally handle well and this is a little bit bigger, but it's still a Mini. Okay, so you get into this fast SUV and tell me how cool it is. All right. Instead of rear launch control, try just a brake boost launch control. That's terrible. No rear launch control. There we go. That's a huge difference. This is why launch control is important, people. And for BMWs and Minis, you need to be in sport shifting, one traction off, and in sport mode. Yeah, you can't use manual typically. All right, so more on driving. 73 horsepower is a substantial difference for one model year. That is huge. And you really do feel the power down low, so let's test it through cliche corner. And it is definitely a little bit understeery and lift off oversteer. But at first, yeah, it, the initial thing that it wants to do is understeer. And then you kind of floor it and you can get a little bit of oversteer, but not much. I don't think so. Maybe yeah. in a snowy parking lot. It's it's not the most fun if you're trying to get oversteer out of it, but it's still fun for an SUV crossover. Okay, but you were saying you could feel the power down low. Do you mean down low, but not at a dead stop? Yes. Down low stopped, you can't, but down low moving, you can. Yes, absolutely. All right. Yes. And there's that torque. Like you feel it kind of right away down low in the RPM as long as you're moving. How do you feel about the shifting? Is it very responsive? It is. And if you put it into sport mode, you actually feel harder shifts, which is really nice. Because if you have it in mid or green, it's actually like a real torque converter auto. It's like a little bit slippy where it's actually normal shifting. And are you shifting by the tack or the head up display? The tack because the head up display is terrible for me. Okay. It is terrible in general because it's one of the plexiglass ones that shows up but I've managed to find a way to put the speed right at this bottom part because if I put it any higher, then it's layering over like six different materials and the background. But back to more driving stuff. So we do have three different modes. We've got sport, mid, and green. So if you do put in sport, you can actually change if it does the chassis or the chassis in the drivetrain. So it actually gives you a little rocket and a little go-kart because this is kind of a go-kart, but not really. A go-kart minivan? Yeah, pretty much. And this does have the adaptive suspension package for only $500. So if you ever get the option to get it for only $500, always check that box. When you have it in sport mode, it's definitely not too stiff. It's totally dailyable. I mean, it's still a mini, it's still an SUV. It's very dailyable, but the only thing that I found weird, it's got that weird BMW steering that some of them has, where I feel like I'm putting in way too much input to keep the car straight on highways. On the highway, I can kind of see that, but dailying it, like in regular roads, I haven't had any issues with it. Yeah, and this doesn't have the lane keep assist or anything either, so it's kind of a bummer. Yeah, a little bit. If you want to step into the BMW X2, which is this car's twin, you'd probably get that kind of stuff. Because you can get a BMW X2 M35i with the exact same drivetrain. Just get cars and wagons. <laughs> <laughs> and since this is the all four, this is all wheel drive. So we are getting consistent launches every single time, but it is primarily front wheel drive or to the point that it doesn't send any torque to the back wheels most of the time, unless it sends a slip. So now I'm gonna downshift and floor it. And how does that sound? It sounds really good in here. I feel like it's pumped in. I think it sounds better from the outside. It sounds really good from the outside. You can have your exhaust on or off. Yeah, and then it crackles and pops. But it doesn't crackle and pop like that first JCW we did. So like, yeah, exactly. It, it's, everything is forever disappointing to me. Yeah, this does have the JCW tuned exhaust, but it's not like the aftermarket optional JCW tuned exhaust we had on that one mini. Yeah, I need a button to click. Like, yeah, yeah, like the Bluetooth button thing. What is this? Yeah, I know. But anyways, for an SUV, for a crossover, it's still fun. It does sound pretty good. And I think this is the best sounding 
BMW slash Mini inside. Yeah, this for, for fake pumped in stuff or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, I could I could work with that for this kind of car. So let's talk about this interior. Nothing's really changed from the last one. No, it's uh, pretty much exactly the same, I think. But after driving more BMWs, I have noticed that the scroll wheel being the opposite way is kind of annoying. And I complained about that before, so I was right. Well, I got used to it because anytime I put my hand on the armrest and my wrist is tilted like this, I know it's an opposite twist. Where every BMW, your hand is flat and it's twisting like this. Okay. So a different association and it's fine. And I just want it the normal way all the time in this. Yeah, it should be. But if you own a BMW and a Mini Cooper in your household, that must be insanity. That's gotta be a nightmare. Let us know if you own both and how long it took to get used to it. So the control knob itself aside, all the buttons are pretty much the same. We control our infotainment right in the middle and everything's pretty much the same in there as well. It's pretty much the same Mini and it's also exactly BMW. I've got my wireless Apple CarPlay. You still don't have Android Auto. Just a heads up, I got a new iPhone 11 Pro yesterday and the wireless Apple CarPlay is skipping songs and it dropped the call. So let me know if you have a new iPhone and if that's happened to you with wireless Apple CarPlay on BMWs. We've got a wireless charger in the armrest, which is pretty convenient. And we also have those cool little mini modes in there. You can see your mini country timer and all that fun stuff. And we got cool ambient lights because it's a mini and every mini has them. And then when you change your temperature controls, it's blue, white, and red. And then volume is like orange moving in and out. It's cool. At first at night, you're like, what's going on? What did I do to my car? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then you're like, oh, that's right. That's what I did to my car. And then with the ambient lights, it also lights up these stripes that are on the dashboard. Which is gloss black, but it's broken up, so I'm totally okay with it. And the broken up part lights up with the lights, so it's actually amazing. It is really, really nice. And then how about the visors? Uh, we should probably test those out. Three, two, one. Fail, but because it's a mini, gimmick pass. Yeah, but it's so high up that I it doesn't know. really do anything. It's still a gimmick pass. It's Gim not a yeah, pass. now it's a gimmick pass. And then it does fit a small cup, but However, big, Big uh, fail on this one. Yeah. The little arms that stick out, they have so much tension that if you try to put a full cup in there, by the time you force it down, it splashes everything up. Yep, that, that has fully happened to me. And then taking it out, it still splashes on the way out. So uh, I say we give this a fail. I 100% back you up on that. And I found something weird with the buttons on the steering wheel. Say you wanted to change your radio station, what would you click? I would want to click to the right, but it's telling me that I need to click up. And when changing the channels in that, I had to click up or down and then click OK to confirm the channels. It was kind of weird. So I guess depending on how you set it up, because right now I'm able to change stuff. Maybe through my Apple CarPlay input, but there's just weird stuff going on instead of just going to the next track. And it also does have rewinding satellite radio stations. And the paddles do feel kind of cheap. They're plasticky, but this is a cheaper car than a BMW. But our gauge cluster is nice and centered, nice and clear. We've got our nice little tack on the left. We've got crystal clear gauges in the middle. I like it. I really like that the Speedo's digital at the bottom. It's kind of 911-y, but except for the tacks not in the middle. Yeah. And it does move with the steering column, which is very cool and gimmicky. I know, the tack would have been nicer in the middle. What do you think of these seats? They're like sport Alcantara. Yeah, I don't mind them. Leather would have been nice, but the Alcantara is nice. I like I like this material a lot. And then from behind, the seats look awesome as well. Yeah, yeah, because the little vent thing's in the middle. And in the back, I actually have enough room for myself comfortably. Yeah, I guess you can't really do that in a normal Mini, which is the reason you have to go up to the Countryman. Exactly. It does kind of suck though that these seats aren't power. Yeah, I know. You have to like manually adjust every single part of them. Then on this one, we only have a reverse camera and the sensors, which kind of sucks, but it's a very HD reverse camera. And I found a weird thing with the window wipers. It looks like you've got an auto setting for intermittent wiping, but we couldn't figure it out. Yeah, so yeah, I, you're totally right on that. It's the weirdest thing ever. It's either on, super on, or off. But it looks like there's a road for intermittent. Yeah, so if you guys have figured that out, because you're better than us, let us know how you did that. And then this also has the crappy turn signal. Yeah, you gotta leave it on. Like the old off. BMW stuff, but I feel like there's a lot of old BMW that's gonna get like super updated in a couple years. Oh, for sure. And now I'm going to floor it into the price. Are you gonna delay into the price as well without flooring it? No, a little bit. This starts at $43,090. Canadian. And this one is $53,530. Not as expensive as I thought it'd be for a BMW brand Mini. Yeah, you get a lot of the stuff that you get in the BMW X2 for cheaper. And it's the cuter version, because I think most people buy Minis because they love Minis. And yeah. if they need an SUV Mini, they now have the SUV Mini that's fast. It's like the Beetle thing or the Wrangler thing. Like you want a Mini, you get a Mini. But if the Mini is too Mini, you get this one. 
because it still looks like a mini from far away. Exactly. I think this is my favorite crossover for this price. I would take this over an X2 because I don't really like how the X2 looks. But technically they're like kind of the same. Yeah, but I like the looks of this. Yeah, no, I, I don't think there's anything this quick for this price that's an SUV. Exactly. This isn't really a crossover, it's just as big. Yeah. It's just tricking you. Let us know what you guys think. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell. Check out patreon.com slash straight pipes, join our YouTube membership, and Teespring for sick swag, which I'm not wearing today. <laughs>